I make it no secret that I am a huge James Bond fan. For over 60 years, Bond movies have captivated audiences worldwide, weaving a spellbinding tapestry of espionage, action, and humor. From the suavity of Sean Connery in the 60s to the wit of Roger Moore in the 70s. Bring tears to your eyes. All the way up to the modern era and the much grittier take of Bond played by the great Daniel Craig, Bond movies have truly transcended generations. Your name's Bond. James Bond. And of course, as the devotee of horsepower that I am, Bond cars hold such a special place in my heart. From the Aston Martins to the Jaguars, from the Lotuses to the BMWs, each Bond car left an indelible impact on the films it featured in, serving as an extension of Bond's personality, or even another member of the cast. Oh, and I suppose that's completely inconspicuous. So with all this being said, you can imagine how excited I was when I heard that a James Bond exhibit was coming to my doorstep, and better yet, it featured a lot of the iconic cars from the franchise, and even better still, it was at one of my favorite museums, the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, Illinois. But before we could begin, my friend Andy had a very important question for me. Where's Q? He's right there. We have a jet-powered jet ski. I guess that really is putting the jet in jet ski. But as for some cars, we've got some. First here is the DBS from Casino Royale, the car that got flipped about seven times, got a Guinness World Record for the amount of flips, and my goodness, this car is just utterly wrecked. This is actually a very early prototype of the DBS because the movie came out in 2006. The DBS didn't come out until 07 and 08 in the US. And so this is more sort of a DB9 with some DBS paraphernalia. The one in Quantum of Solace was much more faithful to the actual DBS. And here we have the clip of it about to meet its fate. But Casino Royale is one of my favorite movies. I mean, I love the DBS as well. And just look at that thing. YouTube, please don't get mad at me. car and another thing i just realized is that this car is an automatic so it really isn't just a db9 with some dbs paraphernalia which is very interesting but look at all the carbon fiber here just completely shredded and chopped up my goodness this thing is so cool the dbs is one of my favorites i've said it before that it is one of my dream cars because of this movie and i mean getting to see one of the actual movie cars in fact the most famous movie car i think of the craig era I think that's pretty cool. And moving from the Casino Royale DBS to the Living Daylights Aston Martin V8 with the skis, I think the only iconic Bond car from the Timothy Dalton era, and look at this, this was the jump car they used, and it's completely hollow on the inside. It's got the exterior of the Aston Martin, but nothing else more than that. This thing went for a bit of a flight. And I think this generation of V8 is probably one of my all-time favorite. British sports cars. I mean, it's got sort of some Mustang influence to it, but it's got just all of the Aston Martin class. It is a gentleman's cruiser and bruiser in the truest form. And you got the rocket engine in the back. This thing is so cool. And I love this car and I love the movie as well. And I'm not a huge fan of the Dalton movies, but the Living Daylights is so cool. I think mostly because of this car. And it's also got the missiles in the front end. Cool stuff. And of course, you can't talk Bond cars without talking about the icon, the Silver Birch 64 DB5. I mean, an icon throughout the Bond franchise for the last 60 years. And in so many movies throughout the Connery era, the Moore era, the Brazen era, the Craig era, these are just so cool. And these DB5s are absolute icons because of these movies. And I think this is in the ranks of the most iconic movie car of all time. I mean, spanning generations and it's just gets so much love from so many people because they know it as the bond car this is the definitive bond car the db5 is known for this this is its legacy in full the db5 otherwise wouldn't have probably been known for much more because before it was the db4 very successful in racing and the db5 didn't have too much going for it but the bond movies immortalized it now more famous than any aston martin of the past and it's just loved for generations and generations and getting to see one here is absolutely incredible and no bond exhibit is really complete without a db5 and look at the gadgets there so this car was in fact screen used in goldeneye not the most famous use of the db5 but it was racing a ferrari and somehow won i don't get that but 
Still a movie car DB5 nonetheless. And speaking of the Brosnan era, here's the jet boat from The World Is Not Enough. Also known for the BMW Z8, but here's the boat. The Z8's not here. And here we are in the second gallery. And already there is another one of the most iconic Bond cars. The Lotus Esprit, the submarine. Some people who play GTA would know it as the Stromberg, but this is the real deal. This is the Wet Nelly from The Spy Who Loved Me. And it is just an absolute icon. I know, I know I've said that a bunch today, but this one really is. I mean, look, just look at that shot. That's probably one of my favorite shots of the movie, driving onto the beach. I tried to do that on GTA with the Stromberg, but this thing is so cool. It's basically a Lotus Esprit shell, but converted to be a submarine. This isn't an actual Lotus that you can drive on the roads, obviously. But my goodness, how fun would it be to drive this thing underwater? How cool. And I know there were a lot of discussions in the past about this being owned by Elon Musk. I don't know what's true and what's not, if he still owns it or if he sold it. And the board isn't telling me anything about that. And it's also interesting because Elon wanted to take this and sort of apply it to some of his own engineering and maybe even build his own version of this out of a Tesla. I don't know. It's Elon. He probably would do that. But super super cool i love the esprit i love this shape too the marcello gandini design just gorgeous car in general and although this one is not a typical road car i love the tartan interiors these cars have as well just awesome stuff and here's not a bond car but a villain car the jag xkr convertible from die another day to be honest not a great movie at all completely goofy and i just I don't like it and this car is just so weird but at the same time at the end of the day it's still a bond car or technically not but it is a bond movie car and it's got the minigun on the back it's got spikes it's got missiles it's got mortars it's got that and these were actually all-wheel drive converted i don't even think that these were i think they were jags underneath and the aston martins weren't actual astons but it's just a really goofy car from a really goofy movie, but at the same time, it is still pretty cool. Now, I've actually been staring at this car for probably the last 15 to 20 minutes, and I'm still not quite sure what to say about it because, well, I'm gonna try and say some stuff anyways, because this is the Aston Martin DB10, and I think that this is the most beautiful car built in the last 50 years. Hot take for sure, but there's just something about it that it, obviously, it's not a production car. It was a concept car built for the movie Spectre. Only 10 of these units were built and most of them were destroyed in the filming of the movie. But this is the hero car. This is the most perfect DB10 on the planet. Based on the old Vantage with the 4.7 liter V8, naturally aspirated, the six speed manual gearbox, but it's been lengthened a little bit and styled to sort of look like the current Vantage as well. And I think that this design is just literal perfection on wheels. I think that this is just it. I mean, it's just just the business, this rear end. It's got just the golden two thirds ratio to it and the wide arches. It's just, oh my gosh, it is perfect. Right hand drive, obviously. And it's got a full interior as well. I think this is the only DB10 that they built with the full interior and it looks production quality it looks absolutely fantastic and the same goes with the body i mean for a concept movie car the panels all fit together it looks like a production car and i really wish it was because i want this car so bad it's just perfect i mean i say it's perfect it's got little curb rash on the wheels but it's this car is just nuts. I've been wanting to see this car for years. It has been in Chicago a few times, but I just, I couldn't make it out to see it at the time when it was on its promotional tour for Spectre. And to be honest, the movie that this was in Spectre is not my favorite James Bond movie. In fact, I think it's actually quite bad, but as was the case with some of the other cars, this one makes it so worth it. The CX-75 that chases it as well is so cool. Two amazing concept cars that I think should have made it in a production, but db10 i always thought it was one of the most beautiful and i still do look at that thing gorgeous car and that's about it for the bond exhibit i mean such an incredible exhibit i mean i'm a lifelong bond fan so it is just so cool to see wow, all of my favorite bond 
Andy is otherwise engaged. So this is what Andy wants to look at. Got it. But it is so cool getting to see a lot of my favorite Bond cars in one place and local as well here in Chicago. I mean, I was heavily considering going to the Bond exhibit at the Peterson last year, but I'm glad I didn't have to end up going out there because it's all here. But thank you all so much for watching. And if you did like this video, let me know which of those Bond cars was your favorite. I mean, the DB10 for me, it has my heart. Love it so much. And come check out this exhibit as well at the Museum of Science and Industry here in Chicago, here through October the 27th, I think. I think that's right. But come enjoy this exhibit. Bring your friends, bring your family. There's so much in that exhibit that I didn't show you guys. More about the science of the movies and about the stunts and the weapons and the gadgets. Super cool stuff for any movie fan as well. It's just awesome. Highly recommend. But if you guys enjoyed watching, thank you so much. And until next time, this is me, Patrick, the King of Cars. Thank you for watching. Take care. And look, we have the... We got the... I didn't know you were fluent in Russian. This is Russian, yeah. Nice.